All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Ashley. And I'd like to thank ACOM for inviting me to be here today to talk to you about a project that started actually two years ago. And I actually was in ACAM talking to the audience uh, at the very early inception stage of this project two years ago. And then uh, funds was available and we had lots of good results that I will be talking about and I will ask Ashi and uh, Ed to keep track of time because I have lots to talk about. So please let me know. Right. So it's on enhancing uh, drilling fluid uh, properties. And this work actually came as a result of a, uh, a PhD thesis for one of our graduate students. It was co-supervised by myself and Dr. Geer Harland from our department. My expertise is actually in nanoparticle formation. I knew nothing about drilling fluids, and we actually joined forces with Dr. Harland and developed uh, this project. So I'm learning about drilling fluids, and we have achieved actually very good uh, sites in there. So in any drilling operation, a drilling fluid has to be injected. It goes through the bit, and uh, it's actually recycled to the surface where it gets cleaned and then pumped back again into the, uh, the uh, well bore uh, through the drilling string. And the uh, drilling fluid is very important because it does these pro uh, jobs, which is cleaning the uh, cooling and lubricating the drilling bit, uh, suspending of the removal and the cuttings, where they get actually removed at this point, control formation pressure in order to make sure that we, ha we don't have purse or uh, a kick, pressure kick, uh, caking and, pre and preventing the aggressive drilling fluid from going forward, as we're seeing here, and then reduce formation damage and control corrosion. So it's very important that the drilling fluid keeps recycling. That's the message. Uh, the uh, problems associated with drilling fluids, typical problems are borehole instability, stuck pipe as a result of uh, the um, drilling cuttings accumulating behind the bit, so you can't remove the bit. Insufficient cooling and lubricating that has to do with the properties of the drilling fluid. Uh, lost circulation is a major problem and it happens actually when you lose the whole drilling fluid to the formation because of large, huge uh, cracks and openings or cracks. And then there is something called uh, fluid loss, which is lesser of a problem and involves partial loss and what we call spurt loss. And our research is actually focused on this problem, which is the fluid loss, partial and spurt. And according to the uh, statistics, that this problem costs about $800 million. And some people say, we talk to experts and companies, and they say this is a very conservative estimate of the problem. It, they actually lose much more than eight, uh, million, $800 million a year in this, uh, uh, and to the formation. So just to clear uh, things up again, this is the lost circulation where you have most of your drilling fluid is lost. There is no recycling at the surface and it happens in large fractures. And this is the problems that we're looking at or the problem that we're looking at, which is the fluid loss. And it happens because of very tiny little openings in the formation and then the fluid seeps in and you lo lose 20% of it sometimes. And according to what's been happening in the literature, that the problem can be prevented by having what we call loss circulation materials. And those loss circulation materials are typically added by industry and they're at the micro scale. So what happens, they accumulate at the pore opening and they unfortunately are unable to block the formation 100%. So some people, not only us actually in the previous uh, research, had thought of actually adding nanoparticles to the drilling fluid in order to make sure that they cap any opening. And as a result, you prevent fluid loss to even very tiny little uh, pores or average pores by a combination of loss circulation materials in the micro domain and nanoparticles that will seal the formation and cake off 100% and prevent losses. So this, is, this was the hypothesis. And again, we were not the first to think about it. There are other people who have thought about it. But our approach was actually, instead of buying nanoparticles off of the shelf from another manufacturer, we actually used our own expertise of forming those nanoparticles from within the drilling fluid. So we used the drilling fluid itself to form the nanoparticles, and we have seen a very improved performance, as I will be talking about. So the objectives 
were at the very early beginning to test the applicability of nanoparticles to prevent fluid loss. And again, those are in-house nanoparticles. And then test their low pressure, low temperature, and high pressure, high temperature uh, loss capabilities. And those are standard tests used by industry to characterize the fluid loss uh, in a drilling fluid. So we adopted the same test in order to compare with industry. Uh, impact on the drilling fluid properties, because if you're adding nanoparticles, and as I stated, the drilling fluid has to have certain properties that are appreciable for the performance, and you don't want to degrade these properties uh, upon addition of nanoparticles. So we have to maintain the drilling fluid properties. Uh, explore well bore strengthening. If I have time, I will talk about it today. And then commercialization and opportunities uh, as the opportunities arise. And we're actually uh, at the stage of field testing right now. So what we did, like any other research, we actually uh, tried to replicate other researchers of what they did at the very early stages of our project, which is we took nanoparticles that we bought off of the shelf from providers and we tested their capabilities of preventing the drilling fluid. I'm going to take you through this table. So we used invert emulsion drilling fluids that are widely used in Canada, 90 to 10 percent volume by volume, oil to water. And then we used commercial based iron or iron based nanoparticle. And there is two values of drilling loss or drilling fluid loss that are reported typically, 7.5 minutes after 7.5 minutes and 30 minutes. And I'll talk about the experiment in some details. With the drilling fluid itself, we collected 1.7 uh, milli milliliters at 7.5 minutes, and then 4.5 milliliters total after 30 minutes. So this presents the loss of the drilling fluid uh, in this experiment. And then with nanoparticles uh, that we bought from the uh, market, we found out that the loss is actually not very much reduced. We have a 7% loss reduction if we use nanoparticles that we buy from the uh, market. And then we decided, okay, we will form our own nanoparticles. We will have our own strategy of forming these nanoparticles. And we targeted, again, the invert emulsions, drilling fluids, and plus the in-house nanoparticles. These are some of the specs of the drilling fluid that we have used. And now we're testing more and more drilling fluids, and we're seeing the successes and the uh, drawbacks of some of the drilling fluids. Um, some are actually on the expensive side, clean drilling fluids, and some actually on the less expensive side, uh, typical drilling fluids that are widely used by industry. So this is our experimental strategy. We formed the nanoparticles. We characterized them using these machines uh, or instruments. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about this later on. And we had the capabilities. Our suppliers were kind enough, actually, to provide the bits and pieces. So we had the drilling fluid on its own. We could add the mud uh, at our well. We could add the stabilizers. So they provided all the uh, starting materials, which is very good. And we could design our own drilling fluid if we chose to. But we tried as much as possible to use the ones that are available in the market. Right? And then we had what we call the low pressure, high pressure test, uh, as I will be talking about, in order to evaluate their uh, performance. So the very first thing that we looked at is sagging. For those of you who are in the field of uh, drilling fluids, you know that sagging is a big issue. And you have to make sure that upon formation of nanoparticles that are very well dispersed in the drilling fluid, that the drilling fluid will maintain its integrity. So it's not going to separate or sag into two phases, a solid and a liquid phase. And indeed, after forming our own nanoparticles, and unfortunately, I can't talk about the details of how we formed our nanoparticles, because it's part of an IP, unfortunately. I would have loved enjoy, or enjoyed talking about it, but I was not allowed to talk about it. So we formed those, and we looked at the stability. And indeed, the, the drilling fluid was stable for over six, years, six weeks. So you don't need it to be stable even for six weeks, because usually you form it, and then you use it right away, almost. So it has a six-week shelf life. And uh, we didn't see any segregation, and no solids, no liquid phases formed. We took the nanoparticles that we formed using one of the methods that allowed us to characterize the particles. And we indeed, we found the particles that we looked at. And in this, this is the XRD output, which is X-ray scattering. And those particles had amorphous structure. 
And we've seen the same XRD fingerprints in the literature for the same particles. So we were comfortable that we formed the particles that we were looking at. So yes, five minutes? Okay, I'm gonna have to rush. <laughs> and then we looked at it through the microscope and we found out that most of our particles are actually in the nano domain, one uh, to 30. Most of them are actually in the lower end of the nano domain. Some are actually on the higher end, which was not a bad idea because we thought that we can mix those particles and uh, as I will be showing, we got rid of even the loss circulation materials. We found out that we can reduce loss without even the loss circulation materials. This is the low pressure, low temperature test. You put your drilling fluid in here, you put the filter paper, and then you pressure it, and then you collect the sample. And you see how much you lost over the uh, period of time, which is 30 minutes. Our focus was 30 minutes. And you can actually have the uh, drilling fluid on its own, the drilling fluid with the nanoparticles uh, in a separate uh, test. So this is the drilling fluid. After 30 minutes, this is how we, we collected, how much we collected, milliliters. And then if we include LCMs that are typical for industry, they had 10% reduction. With nanoparticles formed using method one, we have 68% reduction at very low concentrations. This is very important. And nanoparticles, Using a different method, we have 87% reduction, right? And we even now, we're looking at nanoparticles generation three, that we have even 95% reduction right now, right? By, the results are very fresh. I haven't included them in the presentation. So if you look at the uh, drilling fluid on its own, so when you collect the filter cake, this is how it looked. This is with the LCMs that are typical for industry. This is with the nanoparticles. And one thing to note here, that once the nanoparticles apparently deposit on the drilling fluid or the cake, the filter cake, they're actually the last to deposit, which means that they actually sealed any gaps, any openings, right? We've seen that in nanoparticle one and nanoparticle two. And one important attribute of the filter cake, if you wanna have a really good, efficient uh, drilling, is that the filter cake itself has to be very thin. You don't, because you don't wanna suffer from stuck pipe. Right? You don't want anything to accumulate behind. And if we compare the LCMs used in industry and with the nanoparticles, we have half of the size of the typical LCMs. Right. Uh, SEM images, again, another thing that we looked at is the uh, integrity of the filter cake. And we're seeing without nanoparticles, if you zoom in, you'll see cracks which allow for uh, fluid loss. And with the nanoparticles, you have complete ceiling, no cracks, nothing, even under the microscope, right? Which uh, also reflects on the results that we have seen. Uh, we tested other nanoparticles. We tested the iron-based, and then we decided to test calcium-based particles. They're widely used for shales and uh, carbonate formation. And again, we could get 68%, 55% reduction, low concentrations again. Barium-based nanoparticles, the barium-based additives are actually typical for drilling fluids. And finally, the iron-based, but different kind, again typical for drilling fluids, and we have even higher loss prevention, right? So I have two minutes, I was told, uh, so probably I should talk uh, more on the water base. So we tested the uh, oil-based, and now we'll talk about the water-based. And again, we could prove that we have 28% without even optimizing. This is just without optimization. We have a 28% reduction, in, at least in one experiment. Uh, and again, with the calcium-based, we have 32% reduction without optimizing on the water-based. And I probably should skip the rest of the results because I know I have lots of them. And uh, I apologize, I would have to run after the presentation. So if anybody has a question uh, and wants to meet afterwards, you can by all means contact Ashley. He has my uh, um, contacts. I left my card there. Uh, so in general, from what we saw in this research, oh, okay, I'm chasing this. All right, so in conclusions, we could see that the in-house prepared nanoparticles have lots of better impact than the uh, commercial nanoparticles. And it actually reduced the fluid loss without LCMs. And it had effective sealing. The filter cake was uh, main or maintained its integrity. 
There was no impact on the delivery fluid. I haven't shown that, but we tested that and we, there was no impact. Uh, it reduced the drag coefficient, again, something that we have noticed, which is very good for longer reach. We could extend the drilling at a given stroke. And combination of nanoparticles and granular particles uh, had effective well bore strengthening. And eventually, we have lots of saving as a result of combining all these uh, attributes together. Uh, again, this research was funded by NSERC, Talisman, Payson, and those are the companies that were supporting uh, Dr. Gears Howland's uh, research. Thank you.